Today I'm going to teach you how to add integers. Um, what are integers? Quite frankly, they're just all the positive and negative whole numbers and zero. Zero can be an integer also. If you're looking for an easy way to try and remember what integers are, think of it like this. They are not fractions. They are not decimals. So the only thing that you're left with basically are positive and negative numbers, whole numbers, and zero. So uh, here's the example numbers right here. You'll notice I've got the dots trailing off at the beginning and at the end, meaning it's infinite. It, it goes in both directions. Um, but no decimals, no fractions. That's what we're talking about adding. So let's get straight into learning how to add integers. I'm going to teach you two different methods today. Uh, the first method is what I like to call the number line method. This is just to kind of get your feet wet, um, to wrap your, your mind around what you're going to be doing once I teach you two simple rules, and, and we're going to call that the math rules method. Um, but the number line method helps you understand what's going on. You won't be using it a lot, but it sure does help you have a solid foundation of why something works. So let's take a look at the very first problem I have for us here. 2 plus 3 equals 5. Yes, it's the same thing that you learn, possibly in kindergarten, definitely in first grade, but 2 plus 3 equals 5. How does it work with this number line method? Well, you take a look at your first number and you know that you had 2, and now you look at the second number and you're going to add this many on and you would move to the left, excuse me, to the right that many spots. Okay? So 2 put us at 5. 1, 2, 3. Not hard. Now, you'll notice that this 3 is a positive 3. So that tells us that positive numbers would move us to the right. What do you think a negative number would do to us? Let's take a look at this example. 2 plus negative 3 equals negative 1. It's a true statement. It's true. Our first number is 2. I'm going to go ahead and get to a, a blue here to make it a little bit different. So we'll put ourselves right here at positive 2. I'm now going to add negative 3 to it. When I added positive 3, we went to the right 3 spots. So when I add a negative number, I'm going to use that number's um, sign to tell me what direction I go. When I add a negative number, I'll go to the left that many numbers. So in this case, I'm going to go to the left 3 spots. 1, 2, 3. And I wound up at negative 1. That's my answer, and I'm done. Let's go ahead and take a look at two more problems, just to see if you get the basic idea of it. The first number tells us where we start. This is negative 2, so I'll put us right here. I'm going to add positive 3 to it, so 1, 2, 3. Positive numbers go to the right, negative numbers go to the left. But that has us ending up at positive 1, so we're done. How about this one? Negative 2 is our starting spot. And this time we're actually going to add a negative number to it. So we're going to go three spots to the left. That's what I'm hoping you were thinking. And we wound up at negative 5, so our answer is negative 5. Okay, it's time to actually uh, pause the video if you're doing this at home or if you're catching up. And uh, do these four practice problems and uh, hit play when you're ready. And I'll show you the answers to all of them. Okay, here we go. Number one, you should have wound up at positive five. Number two, you should have wound up at positive four. Number three, you should be at negative eight. And number four, you should be at negative six. If you had problems with these, uh, I would go back, pause the video, try them again, see if you get the right answer. Um, if you got through these with no problem, and you're thinking, man, it's, it's really burdensome, to use a number line. I don't like it, or I'm not even using a number line. I'd like to find a faster way. Then this next method is for you. Even if you're not comfortable with the number line methods, and you're going to say, hey, I'm going to stick with this number line method that we just learned, that's okay for the short term. But long term, you're going to need to know this method, and I call it the math rules method. Um, basically, it's where I teach you two different rules. And it lets you use addition and subtraction to solve these problems really quickly. So let's take a look at it. Rule number one. If both numbers in your math problem and your addition problem have the same sign, add them together and keep that sign for the answer. Now, you've already been doing this 
your whole life in school for the most part. For example, 4 plus 5 equals 9. Do you notice that this is a uh, positive 4 and this is a positive 5? Okay, so your answer is going to be positive. That's what I'm talking about. Both numbers here and here were positive in the problem, so your answer was positive. And it makes it kind of nice when you come down and you see a problem like this. Negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. So what it's telling you to do is, is that since the two uh, numbers in the problem here had the same sign, add them together. What's 3 plus 3? 3 plus 3 is 6. Okay. Since they had the same sign, we're going to put the same sign for the answer. Since they were negative, we'll just slide a negative in front of that 6. Kind of simplifies it a little bit, I think. It's a little bit better than using the number line. But it just takes time to get used to it. Keep working at it, and it will become second nature. Now, what do we do if they have different signs? If the numbers have different signs, this is going to blow your mind, but let's just subtract them. And then we'll keep the sign of the number furthest from zero. Okay, negative 2 plus 9 equals 7. Well, they have different signs here, so let's subtract them. Well, 2 minus 9 is kind of icky, so let's do this. Well, the 9 just seems to be bigger, so let's just say 9 minus 2. What's 9 minus 2? 7. Okay, okay. Now, ask yourself this question. Which of these two numbers is furthest from zero? Negative 2 is only two spots away from zero. 9 is nine spots from zero. So this number is definitely furthest away. It's a positive number, so my answer is going to be positive. Now, let me get a number line up there just to show you that the number line would get you the same answer with that number line method. So here we go again. Our first number was a negative 2. Okay we need to add positive 9 to it, which means we would go to the right 9 spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right here, at positive 7. Number line takes a while to set up, and the bigger the numbers, the bigger the number line. So it's going to slow you down. So that's the reason we're saying use this rule if you can. If the numbers have different signs in the problem, that's a negative, this is a positive, subtract them. So we would say 9 minus 2 equals 7. And then you come back to the problem and you go, which of these two numbers is furthest from 0? Well, this negative 2 is only two spots from 0. The positive 9 in this number, 9 is nine spots from zero. Which one's furthest away? Definitely the positive nine. So we're going to say keep the sign of the number furthest from zero and it's positive. So this would be seven. And at this point you're probably starting to get a little bit confused going I don't know what if. And you've got all these what if scenarios. Well, let me give you one more problem to see if it answers most of those what if questions. Okay? Let me get this number line cleared up so that way I can be ready to go for the next problem. There we go. That's better. Let's take a look at this. You're at negative 13. So let's just go through and, and put negative 11, negative 12, and negative 13 is right here. Okay? So bear with me. This is negative 13 right there. Negative 12, negative 11, negative 10. I need to add positive 10 to it. So I'm going to move this over 10 spots. 1, 2, Missed it there because my writing's so sloppy. Let me put it in a different color just so you can see it. I'm at negative 13 right here, negative 12, negative 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and 3. And that gets me over 10 spots. So I'd wind up at negative 3. So the number line method absolutely works, it's very easy to see. Uh, this is your starting number. This would move you over 10 spots, but that's a big number line. And when you're doing it by hand, it gets really sloppy. As you can see right here, it gets sloppier and sloppier and sloppier. It's not going to help you out too much if you're so sloppy that you don't get the right answer. So let's take a look at this 
second rule again of the math rule method. If the numbers have different signs, negative, positive, okay, so they have different signs. Subtract them. Okay, what's 13 minus 10? 3. Great. Keep the sign of the number farthest from 0. Hmm. This is 13 spaces away from 0. This is 10 spaces away from 0. Oh, yeah, the negative is definitely further away. So my answer needs to be negative. That's all that rule's saying. If you have any questions, come and see me. I can help you out. Um, this is just designed to help you get through the homework as best you can. I'm here for you if you need me.